Hello, everyone. So I will spend the next 10 minutes discussing uh, the file formats which have been uh, developed by OME and are natively implementing the OME data model. And these formats are currently of two types. One of them is OME XML, which I will not cover uh, in this presentation. The second one is OME TIFF. So we have, we have seen uh, in the past years an increasing adoption of these formats within the community. I mean, including both closed source and open source project. And on the open source side, we've seen, we had certainly extensive feedback from two projects in the last year, one of them being the uh, group devel developing the inspector, uh, the inspector acquisition software and especially the inspector OBF format, which uses uh, OME, uh, the OME model as part of their format representation and the second uh, project being uh, micromanager group. Uh, so both of these projects have I mean, have been using our formats, giving us I mean, extensive feedback and forced us to review both our documentation and our set of samples uh, explaining uh, the specification. So this presentation is about giving an update of what mostly OEMITIF is, what it can do, its limitation, and our next steps. So... First of all, in a nutshell, what is OEMITIF? So OEMITIF is a format developed by OME, which is based on the existing TIFF specification. And the addition on top of the specification is that the OME metadata, as described by the OME data model, needs to be stored as an OME XML block within the uh, image description tag of the first uh, image file directory. So this description is uh, necessary and sufficient to identify a given file as an OME TIFF. Obviously, uh, this uh, diagram here is a simple example of a single plane OME TIFF, but OME TIFF can support the whole, uh, the whole variety of uh, images which are supported by the OME data model, especially multi-dimensional, multi-image uh, sets. So in this diagram, for example, an, a TIFF file would have multiple image file directories, uh, which correspond either to different planes in different dimensions or even different images. And all the information and in the metadata which describes the nature of each, of, of each plane is uh, encapsulated into the image description tag of the first image file directory. And for more information, I invite you to look at the artificial OEMITIF samples available on our website. So obviously, this is a simple definition which uh, suffered from problem when it came up, uh, about scaling OEMITIF. Uh, the main reason for that is that the TIFF specification is intrinsically limited to four gigabytes. And this certainly doesn't uh, work well for large data volumes, either in the case of complex multidimensional uh, data sets or high content screening data. So when it comes to dealing with large data volume with the OME file formats, there are essentially two ranges of uh, solutions. One of them is to use the big TIFF uh, specification, which is an extension to the TIFF specification, uh, which is 64-bit base offset, so effectively overcoming the 4 gigabyte limit, and OME TIFF effectively supports uh, this format, which allows to store in an OME big TIFF file uh, a volume of data which can be larger than 4 gigabytes and preserve everything into a single file, for instance. An alternate solution uh, is to distribute the data across multiple files. So this is how uh, this diagram shows you how it would be done. So here you can see multiple OMT files, uh, which each of them containing some different uh, bitmap information. Each of these OMT file is described with uh, the OME XML metadata in the tag of the first image file di directory. And each of these metadata blocks are more or less identical and contain the whole information about which plane is distributed in each uh, TIFF file. So 
using uh, this, that, I mean, this concept, you can actually build something as concept as complex as, as you want, which can be distributed over as many files as you want. Obviously, it has been reported uh, for us that this can lead to increasing sizes of the OEXML metadata as you distribute over more and more file. So we have put also two solutions into places allowing to reduce the size of this metadata block. The first one being to use a master omitive file, which contains the full metadata of the file set. And for each of the other files of the file set, having essentially a short version of the OME XML metadata, which points at this master file for uh, getting the metadata. And the second alternate solution is to use a companion OME XML file, which is effectively part of a file set, contains all the metadata, which describes uh, the dimensionality of the images, the distribution of the, uh, of the planes across the T files, and have effectively each OME XML block in each T file pointing at these companion files. So for both of these examples, we have examples uh, in our uh, uh, public samples. Another thing we have been trying to promote in the last year is the uh, usage of extended metadata. So generically, to store metadata which is not yet encapsulated by the data model, we highly recommend the usage of structured annotations. And as part of the 2015 model, we have introduced uh, the idea, the, the concept of list of key value pairs, uh, which, in, uh, which is called a map annotation in our case, which allows you to, which allows people to store in a very flexible way various information. And this map annotation can be used to annotate various elements of uh, the OME model, notably the image, but also instruments and other components. Also, I mean, as part of a specification, because specification alone is certainly not sufficient, we have been working hard on maintaining our tools and software, allowing you to operate with these file formats. So obviously, by formats has been largely and historically the primary tool for validating, reading, and modifying OME files. But as of the last year, we have been pushing forward the uh, development of the reference C++ implementation, allowing one to work with our uh, own file formats. So with that, what comes next? So we know that we have still some limitations in terms of for file formats and discussing with various people. There are certainly two main directions that we uh, will consider in the upcoming years. One of them is to certainly draw, I mean, add more extension points to our specification and our model, allowing to, for, to read, for example, metadata stored in other files, other places, other, uh, other tags of the TIFF. And a second uh, element we will consider is the migration away, the development of a new file format, which would be no longer TIFF-based, but for example, based on the HDF5. So with this short presentation, I will happy, be happy to take any questions. Thank you.